Good afternoon, staff and visitors and presenters, and welcome to the Burke County Board of Commissioners pre-agenda meeting for Wednesday, January the 2nd, 2019. This time I'll call our meeting to order. Gentlemen in front of you, you have the uh, agenda, and I will at this time accept a motion to our approval. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. It was, it was Jeff. Madam Clerk, all the commissioners are here today except for Mr. Abley, who is excused. If you are out there and have a, a mobile phone with you or something or cell phone, if you'll silence that for us, we would appreciate it. And when you come up to make a presentation, make sure the red light is on, on the uh, speaker up front so that we can hear you. Our first order today is presentations. Our first presentation is from the North Carolina Department of Transportation, the STI prioritization and programming process, and that would be presented by Stephen Sparks from Division 13. Stephen? Uh, good, afternoon. Good, afternoon. good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, sir. My plan is to give a 10, 15 minute presentation. I'd like to do it before the full board on the 15th. Uh, is have a few slides and then I will be free to answer any questions anybody might have or uh, offer my expertise in any way that uh, would benefit the uh, group. All right, gentlemen, I think you've had time to look at the presentation that Stephen will be making. Does anybody have any questions for Stephen today before we get into our regular meeting? I'll ask Stephen one question. I am on that highway committee from, do you need me to help with any information, last reports, uh, or you'll have everything you need. I saw your presentation, but uh, if you needed anything about Burke County specific, I'd try to provide it for you. It, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, I'll take any information that I can get. Okay. Um, do you need my email or? Okay. Yes, yeah, she'll, she'll get it to me. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, but That'd I would fine. appreciate that information. And they have, we have a, uh, a system where we share minutes from the meetings. Uh, they would have some of that, but uh, probably uh, that three months or more or older, they wouldn't have it. I'll try to, to get that together. So all it's right. got all the projects of Burke County in it. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Stephen, is it your intent to go over any particular projects when you make the presentation, any kind of order or anything, because people are going to be asking us, when is my road going to be done? Uh, no. Um, it is just a presentation that overviews exactly how we fund projects and the process that we go through. It's a, it's a two-year-long process, and lots of, th lots of stops along the way until we finally get a draft stip which they're currently working on one right now that should be released in the next few weeks um, but it, it won't go over any specific project okay great anything else gentlemen all right without objection this item will remain on our agenda thank you Stephen we'll see you at the regular meeting all right thank you thank you all yeah, item number two on the presentations is a proclamation honoring big brothers and big sisters for 20 years of service to Burke County uh, Dorian Palmer is unable to be with us today, and I don't think anybody else is here for that presentation. I think if you, everybody's probably had time to read the proclamation, which is straightforward. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that? All right, without objection, this item will remain on the agenda. Moving on to item number four is our scheduled public hearings. Our first one will be from BDI, the building reuse grant for a carrying alternative in a public hearing that will be presented by Alan Wood from BDI. Alan? Thank you. Uh, this is actually a grant that the city uh, was the applicant for, and this is a public hearing for the 5% match uh, of that grant. The grant amount was $230,000. Uh, it was the One North Plaza building or that was the name it's been purchased uh the jobs are 23 jobs uh they average more than forty thousand dollars per net job uh, the amount of the match is fifty seven hundred and fifty dollars which the total 
uh, match was 13,000 of which the city uh, would pay the other half. And I will apologize, I should have had this on the agenda probably in November and it slipped through. So this is a catch up item. All right, questions for Alan? All right, hearing no questions and without objection, this item will remain on our agenda. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Moving on to item number two from Community Development is Zoning Map Amendment ZMA 2018-08. That will be presented by Pete Mentor, our senior planner. Pete. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, starting off the new year with the rezoning application for a 1.34 acre parcel of land, which is located on NC-126 um, out towards Lake James. Uh, the address of the property is 3268 NC-126. And for the record, the parcel identification number is 176-457-3876. As I mentioned, this is a 1.34 acre parcel of land. They have 500 uh, feet approximately of road frontage on NC-126. And um, this property is located in close proximity to uh, North Powerhouse Road. And that is a um, uh, commercial uh, node uh, according to the 2016-2030 for County Strategic Land Use Plan. So there's, there's already um, con commercial development on, on that intersection. Um, we have a, a fire department, we have a convenience store, we have a um, landscaping uh, office and I believe a real estate office and restaurant all located in, in on that intersection area there this this property is located just to the west of of the intersection on the north side of NC 126 and the prop that area is is a mixture of, of zoning it has um, uh, office institutional and general business zoning in that area. Uh, the large parcel of land directly behind the parcel, you'll see it here in, in white on your screen, as undeveloped. Uh, that is actually uh, um, a portion of Hawksbill subdivision. Um, that undeveloped portion has never um, been split out from from its uh, I think it's about 85 acre uh, parent track and that subdivision as you know has has not really developed the way they uh, they had planned and that 85 acres um, is actually um, for sale and uh, the the Hawksbill developers are looking to to sell that property. Uh, that property is zoned planned residential uh, mixed use conditional district. And um, that conditional district uh, has um, some additional um, requirements placed upon it when it was rezoned back in, I believe, 2006. And so uh, the underlying zoning district is the planned residential mixed use, but that uh, conditional district was added to it back in 05, 06, I believe. Um, so the request of the applicant is to rezone to plan residential mixed use. The current zoning is residential too. So uh, in, in conversations with the property owner applicant uh, they said they had originally bought the property to um, build a home on um, and when they found out that the property behind them uh, was going to be sold um, and and not knowing what what might go on with with that property um, they 
are thinking twice about building their home there and since then has actually they they want to um, market it and so um, they thought the planned residential mixed use zoning would be more marketable give people more options for for the property since they can use it either residentially or it does also allow for certain commercial uses as well and going along with that commercial node at powerhouse road in in 126 uh, they thought that that would fit in to the area give more options uh, the land use plan um, and zoning ordinance also um, uh, would would follow along with with that um, as it it is a commercial node and it's located adjacent to other commercial properties so um, that that's what the owners indicated to me they uh, because of the uncertainty of that large parcel behind them um, they thought twice about building a home and want to sell the property they thought they get a be able to market it better if it was rezoned to plan residential mixed use. Okay, thanks, Pete. Questions for Peter on this uh, item? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Pete, if you'll turn to page 74 for me, please. Okay. There's a little bit of contradictory. I'd just like a little bit of explanation on that. You've got three bullets. Uh, the proposed zoning reclassification is consistent with the purpose, goals, and objectives, and policies. And uh, you've got another one that it's compatible with overall character. And the third one is that there is adequate public facilities and service to service the property. And uh, the second statement of consistency, you also have three bullets. Mm -hmm. And it contradicts each one of those statements it says the proposed zoning reclassification is not, not underlined, consistent with the purpose, goals, objectives, and policies. Uh, the proposed zoning classification is not compatible with the overall character. Uh, the bullet before says it is, and, uh, and it also says in the third bulletin, uh, not adequate to serve the subject property, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to read all that, but uh, there seems to be a big conflict of statements on that page. Right, and and what that is uh, uh, is depending on on how the board um, fi finds this um, rezoning case. This was kind of a guidance on if you were to approve it. These are some of the the things that you would find it consistent with. If you were at the board was to disapprove the rezoning, those would be some of the um, uh, consistency statements that would fall along with disapproval. So it's kind of a guide to help the, the board in their decision in making a consistency statement. Well, I'm reading your own presentation. Right, right. And you're telling me it is, and you're telling me not, it's not. So which one of those two? Well, that, my point is, it, you, you know, if, if you vote, your board voted, I believe, four to nothing to approve it, and I see no reason not to approve it. So we have... Exactly. If, if I wrote it up um, in one way or, other, or the other, I didn't want to, to give the impression uh, that the board should vote a certain way so I, I put both sides up there depending on what the board's uh, decision is that that would help them come up with the consistency statement whichever way you decided to vote uh, if I just put it for then I didn't want this to, to seem like it was an already decided um, um, case if, if you well, understand. I, according to our rules and the presentation, I see no reason to deny the rezoning. Okay. Okay. So, when we get this two weeks from today, mm -hmm. will we have the same? 
Um, well, that's, uh, I, I can make any adjustments to, to it that, that you feel need to be done. Well, very direct question. <laughs> does it meet the qualifications what, to be what, of his own? It does. Not? It does. Yes. Yeah. Right. But the, the board doesn't have to, to go with staff's opinion. So, Peter, is it staff's recommendation to approve? It is. Yes. The, the way our law is now, if you vote to approve it, you have to also adopt a consistency statement. If you vote to deny it, you also have to adopt a statement saying why it's inconsistent. So he's just got it ready both ways, depending on how the board, the board votes. Pete, one, one, just one comment. I'm, I'm like uh, uh, Commissioner Taylor said. I'm, uh, I think it's, you know, I don't have a problem with rezoning it. Generally, though, just uh, for my own personal, as I mentioned to you, I, information, I generally like to know what that end use is going to be. It kind of leaves it open. And so does that happen a lot with rezoning? Because it seems like most of the rezoning we get, we know the specific end use of it. With this, I understand you're just trying to create value. That, that's right. And in, in, in speaking with the applicant property owner, they did not indicate any uh, specific use. The, the original use, they bought the property with the intent to build a home. Um, that changed. And so now they're looking to, to sell the property. Um, they, they don't have a specific use. Their only objective was to try to make the property more marketable by rezoning to something that would allow both residential and commercial. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Pete, so as I understand from the comment you just made, the people who own the business does not have uh, a need to rezone it other than they want it rezoned to sale and whoever purchases that property can put any number of them hundreds of different rm uh, uses on there that right they, the owners don't have any they don't have a business and they're um just looking to sell it um and make it more marketable and if it is rezoned to the PRMU district, then any of the uses that are allowed by right would be able to be uh, permitted. If, if the uses that are uh, listed at, by conditional use, uh, they would have to go before the Board of Adjustment at a separate hearing to be approved uh, for those uses. And the PRMU, if, if you look through the, the table of uses, it does not allow as many commercial uses as either neighborhood business or general business. There's, there's less allowed commercial uses than, than those two other districts. One of my questions was, could we have the privilege to know what was going in there? But you, you answered the question, the purpose for rezoning is to sell the property. So the, Yeah, the, that was what was indicated to me. The, the people that own the property are, are retired folks, and they, they bought the property to, to build their retirement home, uh, and again, the uncertainty of what might happen to that large parcel behind them um, caused them to rethink that plan. Thank you. Pete, what is that um, parcel behind that zone, that 85 acres? That's planned residential mixed use conditional district. Okay. So that whole Hawksville development, which I think originally was something like 220 acres, um, that was rezoned to the conditional district. Um, the conditional district allows some flexibility from the standard um, zoning rules, uh, sort of a give and, and take there. They have to dedicate land to um, open space and, and 
different things. Um, they can have uh, uh, different lot sizes and, and things of that nature um, and that flexibility where the, the county can require certain things like connecting to public water, things of that nature. It's sort of a give and take there. And it's the conditional district is mainly uh, put in place for large developments such as that the Hawks bill, um, you know, ha had planned out to be uh, that didn't materialize. Okay, any other questions for Pete? Hearing no questions or further comments, and without objection, this item will remain on our agenda. Thank, Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Moving into section number five, the consent agenda. Item number one, Blue Ridge Community Action Community Service Block Grant for the fiscal years 2019-2020, presented by Mary Wright from Blue Ridge Community Action. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. Good afternoon. And Happy New Year to everyone. Blue Ridge Community Action intends to apply for the Community Services Block Grant Fund. This is a continuation grant that we have received several years. The service area for this grant is Burke, Caldwell, and Rutherford County. Um, this year's grant amount is $456,973. With that money, we're proposing to serve 185 families for the fiscal year. Um, Last year, um, this is an increase in funding from last year. We received this increase in funding due to the way the state allocates funds for the program, and it's based on the poverty level. So through the census data and state analysis, it was determined that, that Blue Ridge Community Action should receive an additional monies for Burke, Caldwell, and Rutherford County. And what we're proposing is to increase the staff by two part-time people, as well as increase the families that we serve. Um, we increase the um, people to provide information and referral to 145, and we decrease the number of case management families from 50 to 40. One of the things that we found out in, um, even though we were successful last year and met all our goals, one of the things that we found out through the case management of the families were that they were in more need of direct services. So we took those additional funds and added to um, child care, emergency assistance, rents, deposits, and things like that to help the families become more self-sufficient. Um, last year, our goal was to move five families out of poverty, and um, through these funds, we were able to move nine families out of poverty. Um, so it's a successful program. Um, the program regulations require that we submit the grant application to, or the county commissioners acknowledge that they received a copy of the grant application. Okay, thank you, Mary. Questions for Mary? Mr. Chairman, I just, uh, I had one, I think. Um, yeah, usually we get a report at the end of the year or whatever, how we did, but we get that report. Okay. Yes, before you is a copy, excuse me, is a copy of the 2017-18 right. annual report, and it not only reports um, the information or the accomplishments of the community services block grant, but of all the programs that we have. If I would have seen that, I wouldn't have to add the second question. That's all right. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Other questions or comments for Mary? Hearing none, and without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Moving on to item number two is the appointment to the Board of Health. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, this is a request to appoint Michelle Freeman to the Board of Health to fill vacant seat number five, uh, which is normally for an optometrist, um, but there's a kind of a, <clears throat> a little uh, caveat in the statute that says if you can't find one or one's not available that we can appoint uh, a member of the general public. Uh, the health director has talked with Ms. Freeman and uh, Ms. Freeman is very interested in serving and is aware that, you know, should we find an optometrist that that's, you know, what we would, would want to go towards. But until then, 
and we do have such a hard time finding somebody to serve, we want to fill that vacancy uh, with this candidate. Thank you, Kay. Questions for Kay on this matter? Hearing none and without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Moving on to item number three is reappointment to the Foothills Regional Airport Authority. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is our annual request to uh, make a reappointment to the airport authority. Mr. Dennis Pearson has served for a number of years and is seeking reappointment for another two-year term ending January 31st, 2021. We appoint uh, two members to this authority, and it's an eight-member board. Thank you, Kay. Questions for Kay on this matter? Hearing none, without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Moving on to item number four, a resolution authorizing a lease amendment of real property at Ammons Drive Suite 1. That'll be Brian Steen, County Manager. Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The uh, lease has come due. We need to renew the lease for our friends with USDA at a reasonable rate, and that is here before you to consider. Questions? Questions for Brian on this matter? Mr. Chairman, I, did, I had one. Uh, I don't know what the going rate is. That seemed like high for that smaller place, but I'm assuming that's the standard rate or accepted rate for the type of building and the square footage. The, the air category of the space and the square footage, that's an approximate a good, good price for them and us, I believe. I, I'm sure Uncle Sam would let us know if it was too much. <laughs> Thirteen seventy-five is a good rate. Wish I could get that one for mine. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions or comments for Brian? Just a, a note. Uh, seems like there's maybe a word missing or two there in that summary, Madam Clerk. Uh, I'll check it out. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Hearing nothing else, and without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Moving on to items number five and six will be our tax department, our tax collection report, and our release fund report. Uh, Danny, how's that work? Danny? I'm sorry to get this to you late. Thank you. All right, the tax collection report for December, uh, as far as current year collections, we're at 79.69% collected. Delinquent, we're at 48.55% collected. And late list penalties, we're at 43.22% collected. All right, questions for Danny on the tax collection report? Mr. Chairman, privilege for a comment? Yes, sir. I'd like to... Uh, compliment Danny and his team. Uh, I did something I've never done. I went online to pay my taxes. And it was so easy. Except when I got to where it says send, it transferred it to PayPal. Was that it? I, anyhow, I called Danny. Yeah. He got it straightened out. But anyhow, uh, it, uh, you know, it is so easy to go online. And I don't know who helped you or who we bought the system from, but it is super convenient and easy to pay your taxes online. End of privilege. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Move forward, Danny. Okay. On the uh, release refund report, the report shows $2,308.72 in releases. We had $1,443.83 rebuild which gives us a net release of $864.89. Uh, there were no refunds out of the property tax system. The vehicle tax system, there's refunds in the amount of $133.62. Right, questions for Danny on the refund report? All right, hearing no further questions or comments, and without objection, these two items will remain on the consent agenda. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. 
moving on to our items for decision, item number one is our award of bid for the NC 18 South and Roney Road CDBG waterline project. Miles, Sherry? <laughs> well, come on up, Sherry, make that report for us, okay? <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As y'all are aware, about a year ago, y'all received grant, uh, grant funding in the amount of $2 million to put water lines in the Roney Road and the Highway NC South area. Um, we opened the bids on December 19th and we really thought that the bids would be higher than they are. They're over budget and like, that's the bad part, but the good news is they're not that much over budget. Um, the, high, the low bidder on the project is about 20 5,000 and some change over what we actually have in the budget. We have contacted, I contacted the Department of Commerce uh, at the Appalachian Regional Commission and asked for some funds and they said they didn't currently have any available. We also contacted the DEQ, which is who funded us at the $2 million level. They have not said yes, but they have not said no. They said they had another project that had, they got under consideration at the same time. So we don't know whether or not we can get any of those funds, but we have asked. Um, the bids that were received are good for 90 days. The second low bidder was about $400,000 under the, over the low bidder. So that tells you, and, and on up from there, almost to a million dollars more. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. right. So time is of the essence, I suppose, for um, awarding the contract so that we can make sure that we, we lock in the bids that we have. Uh, the engineer has worked with the current um, contractor before. You want to say anything about that? Uh, the current contractor, or the, the current low bidder, excuse me, has uh, resources and personnel to do this project with. They're, they are a good size contracting firm. Every reference that I have checked with them was glowing. Uh, there seems to be no concerns. So what we have before you today is to ask for additional funding uh, for the interim we don't know for sure that I can guarantee that you're going to get any money. I just keep, I'll keep asking. Um, in the amount of uh, 225124 from the general fund so that we would be able to move forward with the project as it's currently bid. Okay, thanks, Sherry. Questions for Sherry? Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions and observation. Um, according to my figures, um, we're over budget 19%. Uh, and uh, I've wondered if this board wants to consider, uh, usually when they come in that high over, you could, you got two options. Uh, one option is to um, request for rebid and, and let people know that we're over the budget this much um, and see if we can uh, get other interest rate parties or maybe somebody who had bid would come down on the bid. Um, and the other would be to make a uh, um, some kind of a uh, request offer to if if they came down half of their the 19 or around 10 percent, then the county would ante up the other nine or 10 percent. But um, this is um, this is a huge pod project and, and hard to understand why it would come in that much over uh, a suggested cost on the, on the project. So I just, you know, I just think we, and I know we can't make a decision. I'm just telling you options that we have. We can only make a decision at our next meeting, but um, I don't know why we don't rebid this. Uh, it's just, I believe. If I'm not if I might say something, Mr. Taylor, if we rebid, we have to make a substantial change to the project. Uh, the Highway 18 South project connects two dead ends, so we can't move either way on that. The Roney Road project extends from the convenience site out to Parker Industries, uh, which is at the end of the line. That was our qualifier to make us eligible for this grant because there was contaminated water, things of that nature out there. Uh, that was our first thought was, can we change something and rebid? There's nothing that we can change. It goes from point A to point B. It serves the people along the, along the route. So we've, we've shaken it up as best we know how, and we can't find anything to take out of the project. 
I know, but through the process of rebidding, you hopefully you will uh, attract other people who didn't bid before and uh, get interest from them and get bids from uh, maybe somebody who's um, Profit margin is not quite as high as these. Well, one of the things is with all the natural disasters, cost of everything is going up. You know, the cost of pipe, cost of labor. I mean, they've got plenty of work to do, so they're not bidding. You know, when we did this project originally, when we looked at it, it probably, everything was pretty good, but prices were pretty even, and everybody was continuing to work. Well, now we've got the natural disasters. We've got everything going on in eastern North Carolina. We've got all the other projects, so if we... the we, the lowest bidder that we have was $400,000 lower than the next lowest bidder. We've got some on the upper side already, a million dollars more than we have of the one point. Yeah, I so I'm, 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 If we turn these bids back, we could end up with $800,000 over budget. So, I mean, it's, it's entirely up to y'all because it's, it's, your, it's your project and, and your funding. It would just be, we think that we need to take this contract and run. <laughs> you know, just because we don't know that it's going to get any the climate doesn't feel like it's going to get any better. I can't speak for Right, and this, just for a point of reference, this application for funding was submitted in September of 2016. That's when the cost estimate was done for that application, so times were a little better back then for getting work. Uh, a lot of the contractors that I've spoken to right now, they're busy. They've got what they call good work waiting on. And so the, the environment has changed uh, pipe prices have went up, labor prices have went up, uh, just several things added to making this cost estimate further away from the reality of it. Uh, one major item that was in this project that we had not planned on was uh, DOT put up some guardrail down two sections of Highway 18 that forced us to get off of the road, uh, go through two creeks, and that cost us two more horizontal directional drills which added up to $88,924 that were not in the original estimate. Originally, we were going to make one horizontal drill at the new bridge on Rony Road. Now we're making four. Mr. Chairman, uh, Brian, uh, have, have we ever sent a request saying we're over budget this much and, and asked bidders to revisit their <coughs> costs and figures and see if they could offer anything less. And I noticed one of the uh, resolves on it was to go back to Western Piedmont Council of Government and get them to see if they could get more money for, uh, through the grant. But, yeah, uh, the, the, bids, the bids are in and they're locked in. The COG okay. folks are trying to touch base with the grant providers to see if they could help us uh, with some additional funding. So that's in the process. But uh, yeah, our, our, our DOT friends were rather adamant about some things and would not work with us about a bridge. And uh, we had to go around, we had to buy some, uh, get some easements. And uh, so there have just been some things that have come up during the process to get us to hear that uh, were not anticipated. Um, the guardrail was really not anticipated. And I don't know if you really put them in a corner, they can show you accident information that warrants the placing of guardrails on certain stretches of the road that they, for now, feel need to be. But that aside, the reality is this: the, the sealed bid process was followed. Um, things are going up. Uh, if you'll remember when we did EMS 6, you know, I was thinking we were going to get out of that for about three hundred thousand dollars, and it came in low bid at four twenty-two, four twenty-three. So uh, this coming in, and then you know the original estimate being back in two thousand sixteen when we didn't have the acceleration of cost and labor for materials. Um, I, I don't know if we got any real better option than than to try to move forward with the project, see if we can get some additional funds between now and uh, our meeting date. And if not, then for the well-being of that section of our county and to um, end some dead ends on our water line, which addresses some water quality issues as well as alternate source if one section has to be shut off for repairs. Um, I think it's a fantastic project and it, it, it will 
in the long run being the county's benefit to go forward even though we're, we're having to look at uh, some costs beyond what we originally had, had anticipated I'm sorry so in your opinion you don't think it's worthwhile to get the COG to see if they can get additional dollars well they they are okay uh, we're waiting to hear back we should hear back before we we meet on the 15th uh, yes sir. what kind of delay do we have if we do resubmit what would that be two months if we rebid the project um, at least two months at least two months yes. if we rebid and we might not get that low bid back again he may take this opportunity to to leave when I said on the state water infra infrastructure authority and we had this project before us at that time two million dollars was adequate funding for this entire project and that was in 2016 as you said and that was unanimous vote by SWIA to go with this project and, and at that time we thought the money would be there obviously costs have escalated as far as labor since 2016 to 2018 and I understand that and unfortunately all the uh, resources that are going down east for those projects down there I understand we probably won't have as many bidders as some of those down east and some of those projects to where the storms came through down there my question to you now Sherry is do we know when state water infrastructure is going to meet again and maybe consider giving us the rest of this money we're asking for what the process that we've done so far is we have emailed our grant representative Colleen and she uh, contacted Julie okay and so they've got our your project and one other that they're discussing right now so I don't know what where in the process they are on that but they are aware that, that Colleen's comment was she was really relieved it wasn't any more over than than it was so we're we're hopeful I mean I, I can't you know we're, we're optimistic but we can't make any promises and as you know the board can make their own decisions but I think that you know we've got legitimate expenses we look the engineers look there's no other alternative there's nothing that we can do other than just cut one whole side of the project at one project out in order to stay in budget so it, it makes sense logis logistical sense hopefully to the infrastructure authority to say that yes we do you know and, and, and they might say you can we can't give you all of it but we can give you this amount I mean you know we, it's probably oh, be a negotiation yeah. but we just don't know that yet but but we have asked but we don't know a time frame of when they might come back with that yeah so if we did use fund balance of 225 and they did approve it obviously that comes back to that's us that's correct then. okay just one general comment like you you made I know somebody in this business and uh, uh, it was kind of funny we were um, talking a couple of weeks ago and he was saying how he can he just picks and chooses the jobs he wants because there's such demand out there so the longer the delay the more expense it is and my my fear is that low bid as you spoke to disappears and all of a sudden we're paying you know half a million dollars more right. and it wouldn't be anything other than competition driven I mean if the low bidder had it to do over again and could put his bid in at fifty thousand dollars less than second place bidder he would that's just business but now everybody has shown their prices and I'm afraid if we rebid if we first we'd have to change something to rebid and I don't know what we would change but if we were to do that and rebid we might even see higher numbers mr chairman well my my point is obvious um as stewardship of the county uh it behooves us to look at every option we have uh, to avoid going over budget on items which comes from the taxpayers pocket um, and um, there certainly can't be a whole lot of harm done uh, with the general letter saying everybody's oh it's over budget and a pro rata share of viewers bringing us in budget is X dollars can you do it it's a simple question so um, but um, time it's said and done you probably you're looking at what 400 and some thousand dollars get close to half a million so I think it's worthwhile for us to look at our options and if we want to exercise any of those options to do so so and that's my that's my point for the questions mr. manager jr it, 
is it legal to do such a thing in a sealed bid process? I've, uh, I've, the only time I've ever heard something is if the manager's authorized to negotiate for a service. Uh, but once this is a sealed bid process for a construction, I don't, I'm not familiar with any latitude to, to, to go back and try and negotiate uh, with a low bidder for even less. Well, I think there's always latitude there, but uh, it, it's sort of like saying, uh, you said you'd do it for this, would you do it for less than this? Uh, you know, it's not a very strong position to be in. You know, you could delete, if you want to go through and say, we're going to delete the grass seeding and our staff's going to do it. I mean, there's things you could go in, but it's going to be very minuscule and you're going to really, the, the, I know, the, I'm just saying that uh, your warranty on all these contracts is for a year. So you want, you want the warranty to be in full. And so if somebody's grass isn't seeding because of erosion, you want it to be the one person that you point to that says, go fix that grass and not three different people, you know, for the amount of money that you could save. But you could go through and line item by line item, try to delete a few things, but I don't think it's going to, it's going to significantly bring down the cost to a point that it's not going to cause some additional funding from the county or other resources. No, and really to back up what Sherry says, the nuts and bolts of this project are going from point A to point B on both projects. Service connections are going to be a minimal expense. The biggest expense is, is connecting the two water lines up on the 18 south portion and running the portion from the convenience side out to Parker Industries on Roney Road. That's, that's where all the money lies in. The service connections that may or may not be done, that's pennies on the dollar. So the bottom line is the longer we wait, the more dollars we spend. Possible. Any other questions or comments? I will uh, update the board, or someone at the, will be at the meeting will update the board on the status of what where we are with um, the water quality people and see if, if they've given us an answer, yes or no. And it, as soon as we find out, we'll get an email to Kay, and Kay can disseminate that information to y'all, but we'll definitely keep you as up to date as we have. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Without objection, this item is going to remain on the agenda. For a decision. Thank y'all. Moving on to item number three is, uh, pardon me, item number two is a new job description and salary for election specialist two. With us today, I see we have Anthony Lavino and Secretary L.H. Kirksey and Debbie Mace from the Board of Elections. So we've got L.H. and Anthony coming up. All right. Thank you. Uh, as you know, the reason we're here is to follow up. We did talk to Mr. Britton about the new position, or the new hire, rather, for the person who resigned. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll pass out to you. We have copies here of the uh, job description. Commissioners and staff, almost 13 years ago, when our director was hired, there were the same number of employees in the elections department as there are today. And the job was not as technical as it is now. And since her hire, over the years, the state mandates and assigned duties have grown by leaps and bounds. Our dedicated staff and director are responsible for the State Board of Elections referring to Burke County as one of four since the November election of 2016, only one of four out of all 100 counties in North Carolina to have conducted fair and accurate elections without any voting irregularities or issues such as what's going on in today's news. For the past three years, we've requested in our budgets for an additional 
the staff member to assure us of having a backup for this now vacant position. Arvin da Davis had almost eight years experience that left when he did on this past December the 14th. It was with his knowledge and your wonderful county IT department working with Arvin that gave this county a secure election free from cybersecurity issues and hackers. Arvin was trained back when the state board had district elect election technicians that traveled to all counties, training a staff member to do the election night reporting as well as technical parts of the position. Any, again, it was not anywhere near as technical as it is today. The memo from Ken Strack proved that when it came that proved that when it came down to the county, only weeks before this past election was to begin. No one in the elections department can be can begin to do Arvin's former position, much less all the IT duties that have been added to this uh, to this as this past November. This is why we need to upgrade uh, the description and the person to fill this position. We've only had one person that has worked in the elections department that had any experience or training, and that person was Daniel Bibbins. But he transferred to the county IT department when an opening came, and since his training was in the IT field, he, we, we weren't able to match the salary that he was requesting. We've posted Arvin's por former position with a few changes on the job description that Anthony just passed out to you. <coughs> to work with the county IT with the next election going forward. We've received a member from the State Board of Elections that was full of uh, direction and mandates pertaining to cybersecurity and hacking in our department. Had Arvin not known about our side of the technology to be able to join up with the county IT department, we would have been in a chaotic mess and we thank County Manager Steen for sending the county IT department to us. Here today we're not asking for any additional staff with any additional benefits. We're only asking for an increase to the already established position that Arvin formerly held. We are def desperately needing to hire a person with a degree in IT so that our elections can move forward and safe, securely. It is almost certain that other memos full of mandates will be forthcoming with state requirements for this position for the very next election in November. As for this position now posted, we need to be interviewing by the end of January, and we will need to know the salary to offer those applicants that will have degrees in IT. The starting salary we are requesting is 37500 which is in the middle of the current pay grade for this position, and that's for 2019 to 2020. To finish out this budget year, we will need approximately 3700 to be added to the position's current salary that Arvin was making. The person with a degree in IT will be able to take some training at the state board office with their IT staff and then be able to work ac accurately with the county staff. Thank you. Thank you, LH. Questions for LH or Anthony? Mr. Chairman, I've got a, uh, several. Um, one of the questions I had was, was there not enough salary lapse in the last year to make up that $3,700? Um, I know we were without some help for a while. Um, no, yes, no. Debbie, you're going to have to come up to the microphone. I'm sorry, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Maynard. Huh? I'm not sure exactly what yeah. you mean. No, don't, don't get up, really. I'm fine. Yeah. No, the, the question is, uh, you know, we had um, 
Gary Kling was out for a while when he ran for election um, uh, for, for the board. Uh, we had quite a few uh, weeks, I think, of not full staff. How much uh, salary lapse did we have for the, would, would there Feb be a, would, February he, he filed, but then in June he was put back on. So four months, okay. board members really don't make that much money. I mean, it's a few hundred dollars. I mean, really, Brian knows. They, I mean, it's thankless, just like y'all. <laughs> thankless job, right? <laughs> well, 14 weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks. February. Well, no, no, you're right. I'm sorry. He filed the end of February, so he was out March, April, and May. So yeah. 12 weeks. $4,200 a month. No, it's uh, $208 a month. A month. Or net, net $208 a month. So yeah. that's 100 and something every two weeks. Yeah, yeah. $112. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, a question that could be answered is it's, sure. it's not. And, Chairman, quite honestly, I uh, just about choked um, when I read, um, let's see, where is it? Page 163. Nope. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's on, excuse me, it's on the first, first page, 160. County manager's recommendation. Approval is recommended subject to the chairman and vice chairman's approval of the qualifications of the prospective candidate. Um, I wanted to also, um, page 162.3, the application document should provide a complete work history, including detail and thorough list of job duties Subjects application, subject, submit, excuse me, submit application by 5 p.m. at closing date to Burke County Human Resources. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what I feel, folks. Uh, would you feel good if the governor decided who was going to hire for staff? What are you saying to the board? Why do we have an election board? Um, the um, if our human resources can't what's the word if that board and the human resource director can't come up together with the best candidate why are you involving a chairman and a vice chairman I'm assuming y'all have human resource background that I'm not, not aware of, but even if you do, it does not qualify you to overrule another board. Mr. Chairman, anytime there is a hire and you go above 10% of the manager's authority, it has to come to this board for approval. The Board of Elections is asking for additional funds above the entry level for the position. Uh, the motion, if it was to be approved, was to approve the additional funding subject to the chairman and vice chairman reviewing the qualifications of the candidate that they are wanting to hire, uh, which is pretty well consistent in a sense with the way we, we do normal hires above the 10% uh, that I can offer above the, the, uh, the entry level. So that's, that's all that's about. Yeah, but that's a budget approval. Not a personnel approval. That's that's all this is. Your your the the money won't be turned loose unless this board is is. Um, that's not what it says. Qualification. It says to increase the starting salary of the board of election specialist two by thirty seven hundred dollars and appropriate thirty seven hundred from general fund fund balance, subject to the chairman and vice chairman's approval of the qualifications of the prospective candidate. So the money is there. Uh, we we came Proof. at the thirty-seven thousand five hundred. We looked at the county IT staff starting pay at thirty-four thousand three hundred seven. 
This is an IT person, okay? and we know we need a, a, an IT person and probably one that's been an IT person for quite some time. So if you take 10% of the 34,000 IT starting salary, we get you up to 37, 737. So that's why we're requesting 37,500. Yeah. And, but, and then Brian's saying the additional 3,700 puts it above that. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Well, it's, it's, it's above the starting level, and it's more than, I would think, 10%. So, again, you know, these are two boards working with one another. You've had the exclusive right to, to hire who you want to hire. But now you're asking this board for the additional funds, and this is just a procedure to go through that. It doesn't negate who you offer a, a job to. It's just a review process for the additional funds. Well, Anthony, may I speak straight? Yeah, please, because I'm uh, Now, I may step in and plumb my knees here. I see nothing wrong with when we go through the process and we find the candidate that we think is the best, I see nothing wrong with bringing that application to you guys and say, I, I know, I feel like I know where this is coming from. That's a lot of money. And, and you're trying to look out for the county's best interest to make sure that we hire the person to best take care of the county's money. I, I understand that. I, I really get that in here. And I see nothing wrong. And guys, you may, like I said, I may be stepping to my knees here. I don't see, this is not something we've ever done in the past, not my 13 years. They've always done their hiring and letting go as, as the law of mandates. But I also understand where Brian's coming from. So I see nothing wrong with, with us bringing that candidate's app to y'all when we say this is who we would like. And let's work together like we're doing here. Now, that's my personal opinion. I may chop my head off. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, mean, I, I concur. Yeah. You, you, you concur, don't you? No, it definitely would like input if you have input on a certain party. But I think as the board, the four of us, it, it should be our decision on who it is. Finally, you know. But definitely input uh, is definitely welcome. We need to share this decision. Yes. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Um, I, I'm going to read it again. Some, somehow or another, we, we didn't communicate. <laughs> approval is recommended subject to the chairman and vice chairman's approval of the qualifications of the candidate. It doesn't say approval of budget or money. It is a personnel issue. We don't, I'm going to check, Madam Clerk, do we have that language on any other board that, we, that uh, serves under us in Burke County? Um, I'm not aware of anything at this time, Mr. Taylor. And also, uh, uh, Mr. Davis, Arnold, he would not even qualify for the sheet that we gave you. We are really looking to upgrade this because we are worried about cybersecurity. It's a big issue now. It wasn't 10 years ago, but as you know, it's in the paper all the time. There's a lot of problems with the computers, people hacking, and we need somebody who can step in and talk computer lingo uh, well over my head. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, I'd like that uh, taken off. That is very unusual. Uh, opening yourself up and the board for harassment. That's going beyond regular standard duty and going outside our hiring practices. And I say again, if that board and the human resource Director, <coughs> can't do that. Maybe we need a new human resource director. Um, I, I could say a lot more. It wouldn't serve any purpose. Um, that sticks out like a sore thumb. 
The only thing I'd like to say myself is, Ms. Strzok made a presentation to the County Commissioners Association relative to this particular issue. Even in her own staff, she admitted that they were not familiar. The current staff that she had when she made the presentation, they were not qualified. That was her exact words. They weren't even qualified to be uh, in the arena they were in because there was so much cyber security issues going on in the state of North Carolina at that particular time that they were going to go outside the realm of what they typically hired and looking for more people that had better expertise in cybersecurity. And it was mentioned to all the commissioners in that meeting that day that we should be going back to our local boards, talking to our local boards about IT security, which y'all I know that y'all have already done, and especially when it in the realm of cybersecurity. And that's an issue with anybody that's in any business in the state of North Carolina in any county government or state government. So I think our purpose here is to, as I listened to her that day and listened to the qualifications that she was placing for her staff that she was going to upgrade to take care of cybersecurity in the state board of elections, that she in, implied to us that, we, that she was hoping that we would do the same thing on the local level. And I think that's what we're trying to do is work as a team since we understand what those qualifications might be uh, is to hire that person pay them an acceptable salary which i don't particularly have any problem with but i think we all want to make sure that we get that person that understands cyber security and that we can move forward and stay in that that top four or top three or be the top top board of elections that has no problems like we're having at the other other part of the state and that's the reason I think this was in here that's the, the intent of this is for us to work as a team to hire that one individual that can work with our IT department and that has the cyber security training plus what they will get from the state board of elections when we get one when we get that training right. for that person and that was our intent that is my hope that the person the candidate that everybody selects you know we even ask y'all's input and and on the final person that we think is the best that person will go they've even got homeland security people working now at the state board in their IT department that's the training we want to send down for a day or two and let them get even more knowledge soak it up like a sponge and bring it back so that all the county IT and our department IT can work together because I honestly believe that I, I saw something in our IT department last election, even Arvin said it, and coming from Arvin, he didn't give a whole lot of compliments to anybody, no slander to him uh, by any means, but he said, and I quote, Steve Bennett and his staff know their stuff. Now to me, that's as big a compliment as you can get. And those guys, I've never seen anybody work any harder. And we bonded, we made a good team, and, and I can't help but believe if we can get somebody with some of that IT in there and replace Arvin knew some, but not a whole lot. He had eight years dealing with this stuff. And, and it's gotten worse and worse over the years. And if we can just all bond together, no hackers will come in Burke County. That's what we want. And when we find our candidate, like I said, I'll say it again, I have no problem with saying this is who we, this is who we want to hire. And I don't think, not. I'll do respect to you guys. It shouldn't be your final decision. It should be theirs. But we want to keep you in the loop so that you understand where the money's going and for what it's going for. And I'll hush. And the intent here is for us not to have the final decision. That would be I entirely know. up to y'all. Yes, I understand. Yes. Any other comments? Well, yes, I have one. Yes, sir. Again, I want to thank the commissioners and I want to thank Brian Steen for providing the county IT department because we would have had chaos if we hadn't had them there. We had to update laptops or get dispose of laptops. I know it. Co I know that cost the county money, but on behalf of all four board members, 
we gratefully appreciate the cooperation that Burke County IT gave to us. Thank you. Thank you, LH. Mr. Chairman, just to reiterate that we always approve and it comes from the Human Resources or Brian. Uh, we do approve. Uh, this is totally out of character for a board member or for this board to claim to have the expertise above the boards and above the people who are recruiting for the job. Um, uh, that is just uh, wrong. It's incorrect procedure and certainly does not need to uh, go that way. Um, I will have an opportunity to discuss this subject with a couple of attorneys, uh, legal people, uh, before our next meeting. So. so you don't want to discuss it with the county attorney? Do what? You don't want to discuss it with the county attorney? I can, but um, uh, I have people in the field who are, who, um, has not advised me incorrectly yet. Mr. County Attorney, are we violating the law? No, sir, you're not. You're being asked to increase the salary in a position, and you can put on that whatever strings you want. Thank you, sir. All right, any other questions or comments? If not, I'm going to keep this item on the agenda. And your objection is duly noted. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you all. Okay, have, everybody have a wonderful new year. Okay. All right, that will end our agenda today. I do have a courtesy reminder that our budget, excuse me, item number three. I just marked that off by accident. Item number three, adoption of the rules of procedure for 2019. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I made many comments and suggestions. Um, uh, I will not uh, vote for it, obviously, in its present form. I prefer it to, uh, to be corrected. And um, we'll, I guess, discuss it at our regular meeting. We can discuss it now if you want to. It's up to you. It's your floor. Well, we can't vote on it tonight. And no. Two weeks and two weeks and day, you'll, uh, most people will forget 90% of what you said. Okay. All right. Without objection, that item will remain on the agenda for decision. Now I can move on. As a courtesy reminder, we will have budget presentation meetings on February the 22nd at 8.30 a.m. Please, if you would, put that on your calendars. Uh, that will be Friday, February the 22nd at 8.30 a.m. right here in this room. Is there any other discussion items to come before us today? If not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Seven. All right, we stand adjourned.